Recently, I've seen a lot of people talking about Pipewire, which is supposed to be a replacement for Pulse Audio. And the people who have been talking about it seem to be fairly happy with the results. So I decided I'm just going to go and replace Pulse Audio and see what happens. I've been using it for about a week and a half or two weeks at this point, And you know what? I have nothing bad to say about it. There have been some very, very tiny problems just after installation, but after that point, it has been absolutely rock solid. Now, I can't speak for any other distros, but in the case of Arch Linux, it's set up to basically be plug and play. There's a couple of packages we need to install, and once those are installed, it basically just works. But I'll show you how to do that towards the end of the video. If you clicked on this and have no idea what Pipewire is, let's go through that. Now, Pipewire is still a fairly new project, existing only since about 2015 or so, at least that's the earliest reference I could find to it, but back then it was known as Pulse Video, and it was supposed to be the video equivalent of Pulse Audio, and then the shift to Pipewire happened in about 2017, but they decided that stripping out the video component of it didn't really make that much sense, especially because Wayland and things were being developed at the time, so now Pipewire isn't just a audio processing engine, it's a multimedia processing engine. But as most people are still using X11, the audio side is going to be more important for now. So it was developed to address a lot of the issues that exist in the way Pulse Audio actually handles audio. One of those things being that Pulse Audio has really high latency for doing things like playback and capture, making it kind of unsuitable for a lot of professional work. While also coming with a fairly high CPU usage as well, and it also wants to address the Bluetooth connectivity issues that exist with Pulse Audio. Now, from what I hear, because I don't actually have any Bluetooth headphones to test this with, it's still a bit flaky with Pipewire and might still be better on the Pulse Audio side. So if you do need to use Bluetooth headphones, I probably wouldn't run Pipewire in its current state. But rather than just completely reinventing the wheel and re-engineering all of our software to work with Pipewire instead of Pulse Audio, like in the days of the switch from Ulster to Pulse Audio, it also aims to have seamless support for Pulse, Jack, Ulster, and GStreamer with basically no user interference. Now, Jack and professional audio production isn't my specialty, so I asked some people over on Mastodon who actually do this, and what they said was that pro audio software typically works with Jack and not with Pulse, whereas the consumer stuff that we're typically used to using works with Pulse, but not with Jack. And if you want to run both of them at the same time, you would need to set up a Pulse bridge, which is kind of hacky and might not work most of the time. So typically what people do if they're trying to do pro audio work is they will shut down Pulse audio and then run Jack. And then when they're actually done working with whatever professional software they're using, they'll shut down Jack and go back to Pulse Audio. But if you want to say, watch a video while you're working on something, well, now you can't really do that. And Pipewire is supposed to address this problem by managing them both in the background and just letting your audio devices play nicely together. And from what they've said, it seems to do it fairly well. It's not perfect, it does introduce a level of delay over just running native jack, so it might not be suitable for doing things like, say, a live recording, but when it comes to just mixing audio, the convenience you get from it might actually be worth the trade-off. And because flat packs are not going anywhere, they want them to be supported with basically no hassle. Now, by default, Pipewire is going to use systemd to do things like server management and socket activation, but unlike other systems out there, it's not a hard dependency. Over on the Gen2 wiki, they actually have it running with uh, OpenRC. So this page right here, if we scroll down a bit to the OpenRC section, you can get it working without systemd. There seems to be varying levels of success, but there's not really much documentation on how to do this. There is a couple of forum posts over on the Artix forum where people have it working. And if you're using something besides OpenRC or Systemd, presumably you can get that working as well. I just can't really help you with that. I'm going to say if you're running a system that doesn't use Systemd, but you're not comfortable doing things by yourself like that, just wait for a while because there will be solutions that do pop up. Now, by having seamless support of all of the audio systems, this makes audio control really, really easy because they've basically just all been linked together. So... Right now, I don't actually know of any native Pipewire controls, but it doesn't actually matter because we can go and control everything with something like Pulse Mixer instead. So 
I can go and modify these levels in here and it works perfectly fine. And then if we go over to say Ulcer Mixer, because these are all linked together, I can go and raise up my level in Ulcer Mixer and it affects everything over here as well. And if you don't believe that I'm actually running Pipewire, as you can see, my card and my chip right now are set to Pipewire. Now, what about this video functionality? Why is that actually there? Well, let's say that you're running X11 and you want to do some screen sharing on Discord. There is no problem doing this. Discord is going to use your X11 server to work out the screens in your system and it's just going to work perfectly fine. But if you're running a Wayland system instead, it can't actually do this. There are hacks to get it working. You can do things like turn OBS into a webcam, or you can run an X11 server just for the sake of screen sharing. But all of those are hacks, and a much better solution is just to allow WebRTC to work through some other means, and that other means is going to be Pipewire. As for those tiny issues I had with Pipewire, when I said they were tiny, I really did mean they were tiny. So when I switched out from Pulse Audio to Pipewire, it reset my default audio device to some random device. I just swapped it back and it's not changed at all. And also it set all of my audio levels for every single device for output and input to 74%. I don't know why 74 of all numbers, but I just changed the number and it was fine. Some other people have had some more problems. I haven't experienced any of these myself, but over on the Arch Wiki for Pipewire, there is a troubleshooting section and there are a couple of solutions in here that you can go through. I can't guarantee whether they will work or not because I have not had to deal with them. Honestly, I was expecting some issues, whether that be, say, recording my audio through Pipewire, maybe there was going to be some noticeable audio quality difference. Nope, seems exactly the same. Maybe Wine. Maybe if I played a game through Wine, there would be a problem. Nope, perfectly fine. Maybe if I ran multiple audio streams at the same time, there would be some sort of distortion. Nope, it just works. Now, this isn't me saying that Every single distro out there should be using it. This is just a singular test case, but in my case, I can say that it is absolutely perfect. Better yet, if you are a distro maintainer, please do not swap your distro to Pipewire because the documentation is basically half complete. Just wait a couple more months. The documentation will be more fleshed out. It should be a more stable system and then you can decide what you want to do. Now, amusingly, if you've run Pulse Effects within the last month or so, you probably already have Pipewire installed because Pulse Effects is no longer a Pulse Audio application. They actually went and replaced the dependency with Pipewire, which seems like a really, really weird thing to do. I don't understand it. It's really confusing by the name, but that's just the way it is. Now, there is one distro that is shipping with Pipewire, and that is the Fedora 34 beta, and it's very likely to be there in the main release of Fedora 34 as well. And the reason why Fedora is doing this is because you will never escape Red Hat. No matter how much you try, how much you try to get away from Lenart Pottering, Every project seems to be a Red Hat project, and Pipewire is absolutely no different. Personally, I don't care if it's a Red Hat project, I just care about good software, but I know that if I don't mention it, I will get a couple of angry comments being like, why did you not tell me this was a Red Hat project? I don't want to run any Red Hat software, grr, I'm so angry. If you'd like to try this out for yourself, there's a couple of packages we're going to need. So the first one is going to be the Pipewire package. This is the main package, but because there's not really anything that runs native Pipewire, we're going to need a couple of extra things as well. So the first one we'll need is Pipewire-Ulcer. This is going to add in Ulcer support. Most applications now are running Pulse, but there's a couple of things that are still using Ulcer and just never got updated. And the other one we're going to need is Pipewire Pulse, and this will let Pipewire act as our Pulse server. And if you do any production audio work, go and also download Pipewire Jack for the Jack support as well. But in my case, I don't actually need that. And then once you've done that, Pipewire should be automatically enabled. If it's not, there is a systemd job that you can go and enable to get Pulse working, which is pipewire-pulse.socket. Or if you're like me, you will just restart your system because that is going to be much easier. 
And then to check if Pipewire is being used as your Pulse server, basically just go and run PACTL info. And if we go down a bit to the server name, as it says Pulse Audio on Pipewire and then whatever version you're currently running. Now for most typical use cases, Pipewire is going to be a drop in replacement. But if you have some weird advanced custom pipeline, I can't guarantee it's going to be that seamless. You might have to do some fiddling and ultimately it may just not work through Pipewire. So in that case, just go back to Pulse Audio and then try it again a year or two from now. But if you don't touch anything with Pulse Audio, it'll be fine. My experience with this has been absolutely amazing and it makes me very hopeful for the future of Linux Audio. Speaking of Linux Audio, if you like to host some audio on Linux, maybe try out Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. I think that'll be pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, uh, Peter D, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.